All right, let's talk about common microservices authentication architectures. So one thing that you want to be aware of is that in the past, enterprises had a perimeter defense plan. You know, this is 15 or 20 years ago where there were basically firewalls around all the important assets. And you got in through those firewalls, either through a VPN or being on the internal network. But with the rise of SaaS, bring your own devices and the cloud infrastructure, there's a lot more permeability to that network barrier than there used to be. And so people are moving more and more towards a zero trust paradigm where every action needs to be authenticated, basically. And so that's what a lot of these architectures for microservices with JOTS allow you to do. So we're going to look at four common architectures for using JSON Web Tokens with microservices. Three of them are going to be in a situation where you have a user or a client that's driving the process. And the fourth will be for internal microservice communication. So in this case, we have a JSON Web Token that lives on the client. It's presented to the API Gateway. The API Gateway needs to validate that JSON Web Token. And then it needs to pass the information in that JSON Web Token through to the microservice that the request is actually for, right? So it might be a request to create a to-do. You have a couple options. The first is you can pass a subset of claims. So the way that works is the job is presented again to the API Gateway. The API Gateway does its validation. It peels apart that JSON Web Token and passes off just what is needed to the subsequent request. And so it might put it in the header, it might put it in the body as an additional request parameter. But for creating a to-do, we might just need from that job, we might just need the subclaim. We might just need who is this to-do being created for, for example. So the to-do microservice can then do its own validation. And one thing that's important to note is that the API gateway should put an API key on that request because the to-do application, again, needs to make sure that the request is actually coming from the API gateway, not from somebody else on the network. So the to-do microservice can do its validation. It can add that to-do and then pass the result back to the API gateway. This pattern has some strengths because you are just sending on to the to-do application just what it needs to know, right? So there's not a lot of extra data that's being sent. The to-do application doesn't necessarily know when the jot expires, right? That initial gray jot. But it, there's a lot more complication on the API gateway side. It needs to know kind of what data gets peeled off for each of these microservices. And you can imagine as you have more and more microservices, that big old block of logic gets more and more complicated. Another option is to reissue a JOT. So in this case, the gray JOT comes in, goes to the API gateway, and then it gets turned into an orange JOT. That orange JOT is then passed on to the to-do application, which can then perform its own validation on that JOT. And then it can extract the information it needs out of that JOT and do its business, right? Create the, create the to-do. That orange JOT can be different from the gray JOT. How might it be different? Well, you can have that orange jot be valid for a much, much shorter period of time than the gray jot might be. We actually have had clients that have that orange jot be valid for one to two seconds. So it essentially turns into a one use JSON web token, which is good from a security perspective because it means that essentially you don't care if someone else steals that jot uh, because they won't be able to do anything with it in terms of presenting it to the to-do application and actually taking action against it. It also can be signed by a different key. So this gray jot is probably going to be signed by an asymmetric key, which has some performance implications. But within the trust boundaries of this API gateway, you can actually use a shared key. And so that orange jot can be signed by a symmetric algorithm, which means that the decoding and the verification of the signature can be much faster, relatively speaking. 
The third thing that you can do is actually have that jot have its own audience. So the to-do microservice can be an audience, the share microservice can be an audience, and the reminders microservice can be an audience. And again, you're just building in defense in depth so that a jot that's presented to the to-do microservice can't be stolen and reused and presented to the share microservice, for example, because the share microservice during its validation will say, hey, actually, this job was created for the to-do microservice, not for me. So the benefits of this are you can leverage the power of JSON Web Tokens. The downsides, of course, are that you have to do that parsing of the JSON Web Token instead of with the previous example where we were just peeling apart the JSON Web Token and putting the values in the parameter so that the two application didn't need to actually know anything about JOTS at all. The final option for user-initiated JSON Web Token authentication authorization patterns is to do a pass-through. And so in this case, the, the JOT that is presented by the client to the API Gateway is presented to the to-do microservice. So this means that the API Gateway has minimal complication, right? It's not creating a new JSON Web Token and peeling off claims and, and signing it with a new key. It's not extracting out information that needs to be passed to a certain API or microservice. It is actually just passing right through after it's been validated. What this does is it increases the size of the JOT, all other things being equal, that the to-do microservice has to process and parse. The to-do microservice doesn't necessarily need to do all of the validation that, that the API gateway does, although it certainly can. So those are three patterns for, again, situations where the user is initiating or a client is initiating a request against an API gateway and presenting a JOT to do so. Another common pattern is microservice to microservice requests. And so in this particular case, the reminder microservice might need to call the to-do microservice to say, hey, give me some to-dos. I'm about to send, send some reminders. But that might happen on a schedule as opposed to being initiated by a user. And again, in a zero trust environment, we don't want the to-do microservice to just take any request that it gets and return back to do's. We want to know who's making that request. So what you can do is you can actually have the reminder microservice contact an internal identity provider, present some credentials, and then have a job be generated for that request and have the reminder microservice then present that to the to-do microservice. Now the to-do microservice can do its validation and know who is making that request. You may be familiar with this is the client credentials grant, essentially. Let's walk through the four different ways we've seen microservices use JSON Web Tokens for authentication authorization at FusionAuth.